Hi guys, it's Kelly Lenevola here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps and today we are celebrating Christmas in July. Now, I'm not going to lie, it's a little bit difficult for me to sometimes make winter cards in the summer, but this one actually came together pretty easy for me. So I'm using the Snow Buddy stamp set and the matching dies and then I'm also going to use the Rectangle Trio die and what is this one? I jingle all the way. That's what it is. And it's the stamp set and the dies as well. Before I get into, no, I got to tell you about this first before I tell you about the other thing or I'm going to run out of time. So I originally had the idea that I wanted it to be a dark background, a dark navy background with um, varying types of snowflakes in the background, like varying brightness. And I thought that that would be super cute. They would hang down over like these little um, snowmen in a frame. And so that was my original idea. And you guys know that I'm all about um, not starting over. I'm also all about practicing. So even though, and you're, you're going to see we're speeding through this very quickly. I heat embossed it with white embossing powder. And then um, I'm going to switch over to Unicorn Pigment Ink from Hero Arts. Because this is going to be not quite as bright white as the embossed snowflakes. And then I'm going to do second generation stamping as well because pigment inks takes wet longer. It is really awesome for that. And so there's three different varying levels of brightness. Again, I'm going to be completely honest with you. By the time this is all said and done, I did not end up using this piece, but that's okay. I'm sharing it anyway to show you a that everybody makes pieces that they don't love or aren't happy with or maybe don't go with what they want. Two, maybe this will give you an idea for something that you want to do. It gave me one. Here, what I'm doing is creating kind of like a frosty edge, and I'm just using a piece of um, ink, the ink blenders from Ranger, like you would use for distress inks or distress oxides. And I just fold it in half, and I'm picking up the unicorn pigment ink and just kind of like rubbing and dabbing it on. That totally gave me a, a whole different kind of idea for a whole nother card that I'm probably going to save for the winner, I'm going to be honest. But so I wanted to share with you anyway, even though I didn't use it, because maybe you saw that and got a fun idea or an idea for a fun background, or maybe it's not even snowflakes, maybe it's leaves or flowers. You know what I'm saying? Like you never know um, what it's going to spark that, that creativity, that idea. And so it's really good to um, just try it. Just try it. Like people ask me, oh, can I do this or can I do that? Will this work? I don't know. Try it um, because you're going to learn something. So we're going to hop right into the Copic coloring. Um, this is such a fast paced video. I know it's still a long one, but like normally I'm used to more time to talk. Um, I'm obviously snowmen are white. Snow is white. Snowmen are white. Um, so really when I'm doing the shading, I'm just adding where the shadows will be just so that he um, or she has a little bit more dimension. So I'm adding um, some shadows to the left and the right hand side of their bodies. I'm also adding a little bit underneath their nose. I'm adding very minimal um, just because I want this object to be white so there should still be plenty of white space. I love their bellies. Oh my goodness. I love their little snowman bellies. I think they're totally adorable. Um, and you can see like he has like a little neck area which is like his head's bigger than the you know snowmen are made up of like usually like three three size um, snowballs. And anyway so you can see that he's like this big rotund belly. And I'm going to play that up by putting shadows um, where the second one, so like the neck area, falls behind. So you'll see with the C5, I'm adding very, very minimal. And this is what I talk about when I talk about dark colors and adding just a little bit and a little bit goes a long way. That little bit of C5, which is so minimal, really just pulls the whole thing together together and gives it lots of dimension. And then I'm just going to blend back out to my lighter colors. Now, before I explain anything else, um, I do want to tell you that Honey Bee is having a Christmas in July sale. Now, when I heard Christmas in July sale, I was like, cool, let me get my Christmas stamps and see what I can come up with because you know I'm all about saving money. And then when I went to go look at the product in the store, I realized that it was so much more, so, so much more than a Christmas in July sale. There's everything fall is on sale. Everything red and green is on sale. Um, there's some flower sets and like 
um, geometric shaped dies that are on sale. It's just, there's over 200 products that are on sale. It's 20% off, uh, and, which is amazing. So all of that information is below the code to use and the link. Um, and then I did, I do have other cards that I've made previously. If you're new to this channel, you may not have seen those videos. If uh, you're not, you probably have seen them. But I, if you want to go head over to the blog, I linked some of the other cards um, that I've created with the items that are on sale, just uh, in case you do purchase one of those um, and you're looking for a little bit more inspiration. Moving on, so I did all the noses. I'm going to move on to this top hat. Coloring shiny black things is tricky, tricky, tricky. It doesn't have to be because you have to trust yourself. It's going to look weird. You're going to think it looks weird. So you can see here I'm using a C7, a C9, and the 100. And it looks kind of crazy because I'm flicking from the left and the right hand side. I did want my um, shine to be a little bit more on the right hand side because it's going to be tilted when it's on his head. Um, and then I'm going to leave just a very little sliver of white. I'm not going to try to blend the white into the black. I'm just going to leave the white there. And it's going to look really weird in person. But you can see when you look at the object now, it looks like there is a real shine on it. In real life, when you look at it, like when you look at it up close, it looks like it looks weird when you're that close to it because it just looks like an empty white line. But when you pull back and look at it, which is, you know, why when you're looking at your projects, you should walk away and come back to it. You should hold it at arm's length um, because your point of view can change uh, based on you know, if you're sitting there scrutinizing it. Nobody's going to do that to your cards, <laughs> guys. Nobody is going to, you know, hold it right up to their nose and look at every little thing. Because sometimes for a technique to work, for it to give the impression that you want, like here with this top hat, um, it's not going to be perfectly blended. It's not going to be a smooth blend. And I struggled with that so much when I first started Copic coloring because I thought everything needed to be smooth. And then I over blended everything. I over blended the daylights out of it. And then I looked like I had just one color and I couldn't understand why my Copic coloring wasn't what I wanted it to be. And it's because I was looking at everybody else's, you know, from arm's length away and I wasn't right up front and close, you know, right underneath my nose, um, criticizing it. And, um, so just just keep that in mind we did um you know we talked about the uh mystery boxes and cards i think what i'm going to end up doing is creating a private um facebook group for that and so if you're interested in the mystery boxes um i will um when i'm when i'm ready i'm not ready yet <laughs> um, but when i'm ready i will let you guys know and i think i will just invite people to the closed group if you're interested you can um you know, join that group. If you're interested in getting a card, you can also join that group when the time comes. And I'll probably just create a document and people can just add their name and address. And if they don't want a mystery box, but they do want a card, they can just put their name on there. And when they, when I get around to mailing cards, I'll, you know, just check them right off the list. So, um, what else has been going on? Oh, the puppy. That's what I was going to tell you guys about because I completely forgot about that. So, as you know, I had been in the market for a puppy, and one of my followers, Dawn, awesome, um, hit me up on Instagram and was like, hey, I am a foster for this rescue, which is about four hours away from me, but still in Ohio. And so, I, um, she had told me about some puppies, and so I went to go apply for the puppies. When I went to go apply for the puppies, I saw this other dog, his name was Charlie. And Charlie was a Rottweiler mix, totally adorable, super, super cute. And he was like three months old. So I was like, hey, is Charlie still available? Because, oh my goodness. Um, and it turns out that he was not, well, no, he was at that time. I'm sorry. He was available at that time. And there had been a family that was interested in him, but that family wanted to know if the shelter would keep him until after they got back from vacation. And the shelter um, said, no, they would not. So he was available. Well, then I put in my application. Um, I didn't hear back from the shelter. Like a week went by. And then um, Dawn reached out to me again and said that the original family came back and had adopted Charlie. And I was like, okay, well, I'm happy that he has a forever home. I'm sad that it's not me. But, like, I totally get it. I understand. Um, then three days... I think it was three days later she sends me another message that says charlie's back 
and so I'm like, hmm, why'd they send the dog back, right? Like, what, what would I, why, why, why was it three days and they sent the dog back? So then the lady who runs the shelter, super nice lady, calls me back, and she pretty much tells me, the, he's a puppy, and puppies are a lot of work. Puppies are like babies. Um, they just are. They're, you know, they're not house trained. They, you know, cry in the middle of the night. They want to play. They don't understand what no means. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, which is why I wanted a dog that was a little bit older and not quite a puppy because my life is crazy, but I was willing to do it. You know, I did it with Molly. Um, and so I talked to the lady at the shelter and basically the, yeah, like these people just weren't, they weren't ready for a puppy, which is fine. So now Charlie's back. So then they also have another dog, um, named Marlin and, uh, they thought maybe Marlin would be a good fit for our family. Now he's about a year and a half, but he has a little bit of anxiety no big deal for me because my Molly also has a little bit of anxiety. So I'm pretty much used to it. Side note, back to the cart. So you saw me with the white gel pen. I did add a little bit of um, a highlight to the noses and stuff, but what I did was extend that little bit of highlight that was on the hat, um, just with like a little few little lines. Here is what the car originally looked like. And here is where that background went to the wayside. I just could I just couldn't love it, guys. Not that I didn't love the background and maybe for something else, um, like I said, it did give me another idea, but I didn't love it for this. And so I decided to do a new one because that's what I do. Um, so here, what I'm doing is, this is just Nina, uh, 80 pound solar white cardstock. That's what I use the whole time, except for that navy, that beautiful navy is W plus nine. But anyway, um, so here I am, I treated the paper with my embossing buddy. I'm stamping in Versamark. And then I am using embossing powder from Nuvo. This is the Glitter Embossing Shimmering Pearl. Um, so it's like a clear embossing powder with a glitter in it, which is really, really pretty. So I'm doing that and then I'm just going to heat emboss that until it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to do that all the way across the board. Now, because this wasn't my original game plan, I'm kind of hoppy all over the place. Um, so here I'm going to stamp the sentiment because I was gearing up to do my die cutting and I wanted to be able to do it all in one swoop. So I am stamping the sentiment, which says, let it snow. I think that's totally cute. Love this script font, right? Oh my goodness. Um, and now we're back to the background. So sorry. I'm just, I'm, well, I mean, my voiceover is kind of all over the place too. So if you're new here, this is kind of the way that it normally goes. So if I'm not your style, probably don't subscribe. Um, but anywho, so I wanted a really light blend. Um, I, you can see how much I'm swirling off before I even come to the paper of the Salty Ocean Distress Oxide because I want it to fade to white at the bottom. I do want it to be a fairly heavy color at the top, but I can build that up. It doesn't have to be heavy right out the gate um, so that you can actually see that embossed resist and see the snowflakes. Then if you know me and you've been here before, you know what's coming next water spatters, perfect pearls, all day, every day. You know this. Anyway, back to the dog. So um, speak to her other dog named Marlin, who might be a good fit for our family. We make plans to come down there on a Sunday. And um, then when I talked to her again, she was like, well, maybe you should come down on a Wednesday, like on Wednesday to meet them. We'll meet you halfway. So you only have to drive two hours and you can meet the dogs bring molly with you and nathan they can you know everybody can meet them and then if you decide one works and you want to take them home you can come back on sunday and then you don't have to worry about molly and nathan in the car um with this new dog and i was like that's a really good plan let's do that so of course the day that we're going to go eric gets out of training late never ever in the history of forever did a um law enforcement training go the full time this one went 10 minutes after the full time we were both like shocked um so we end up getting out of here about an hour late on the when i call them uh, i'm sorry text them to see if that's a good time the lady who has marlin cannot wait uh which i understand like we're we're running late i get it but the lady who has charlie can wait and he's the one that i'm like really you know in love with so we drive down there. The training facility that we were going to meet at is now closed. So that's a non-option for us. Um, so we decide we're going to meet at this Wendy's that has like a field by it. Um, so she's like, it's right off the highway. So when I get off the highway, there's like cornfield, 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 gas station cornfield. So I send her a text and I'm like, I cannot find this Wendy's. And she was like, oh, it's right off the same exit. So 
I ask her like for the address of where it is. Well, apparently we've gone off, gotten off the highway like a half an hour early. Um, so now we have to drive like all these windy back roads to get there. We get there. He's adorable. What a little love. I mean, honestly, cutest puppy. Him and Molly get along great because my Molly cares about nothing. She's like the most chill dog that ever existed when it comes to other dogs or kids. Like she does not care as long as you don't walk up on her house or on her street. Um, when she is in the house and watching in the window, then, then she cares. But anyway, so we're like, okay, he's wonderful. We get something to eat and then we're driving back home. And now mind you, Eric and I have both been up since about 5, 30, 6 o'clock that morning. So has Peanut. It goes bad, y'all. It goes south. Peanut is overtired. He falls asleep for 20 minutes and then wakes up crying, just crying, crying, crying because he has a headache. I am heartbroken. We are driving my car so normally i'm the driver he's caddy corner to me so i can reach him but eric is driving so now my child is behind me and i cannot reach him um so i end up having to try to talk him i had to bite a ibuprofen in half and try to talk him through swallowing this pill which is just not happening um eventually it does happen but it was just it was such a long it was just such a long process guys we didn't end up getting home until like one o'clock in the morning and then after all of that it turns out that Charlie should probably be in a home with older children so we didn't even end up bringing you home so yeah there's that um the card also there's that so just putting on the sentiment everything was adhered with uh foam tape so that it would be I'm really into this clean and layered style lately uh in order to fill in a little bit of what I felt like was gapping next to the sentiment i went ahead and used some clear iridescent sequins and just filled those in um some of them up to the right i did go up over the scarf of the one snowman but i'm totally fine with it and then that's it that's the whole card so please be sure to stop over by the blog check out the sale and i will catch you guys on the next video bye